James Pinero tracks how New York's arts institutions, from the Brooklyn Museum to the Metropolitan Opera, have been affected by the downturn. Of course, when you run a large nonprofit with million-dollar endowments and a reliance on wealthy benefactors, your fortunes are largely, largely tied to market performance. But Pinero thinks it's not that simple. Many of New York's most prominent cultural institutions adopted the same sorts of bundled risk, high-reward strategies that got Lehman, EIG, and others into so much trouble, he says. His new piece is The Culture Crash. James Pinero, he's the art critic and manager of New Criterion uh, magazine, and he joins us in studio. Welcome to WNYC. Thanks for having me. Before we get to why it's so rough for institutions. Tell us just how bad it is. How much of a hit did local museums and, and, the, and, and other uh, cultural institutions take over the past year or so? Well, my assignment for City Journal was to see how arts organizations are doing in the economic downturn. The shorter an- short answer is not very well. Uh, since January, the Metropolitan Museum has cut 15% of its workforce uh, through layoffs and early retirement. And uh, the Brooklyn Museum has closed one of its three special exhibition galleries, um, in April, I was actually listening to the show, and I heard Arnold Lehman from Brooklyn Museum, and he described the situation as a perfect storm. Funding across the board is down. But at the heart of this storm are losses in these organizations' endowments, which can be between 25 and 35 percent. At the Metropolitan, that means a loss of somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 800 million dollars. And since that museum derives let's say 30% of its annual budget from endowment revenue, that is a significant hit. And my article asks, well, how did this happen? And I guess we should mention that Arnold Lehman, who runs the Brooklyn Museum, is um, not one of the Lehman brothers, as far (laughs) as we know, right? Uh, But you think that that loss was much more than just the fact that their endowments were tied to the stock market. That's right. I, I, I started the essay with that assumption. But then um, as I looked more closely, I said, well, why were these losses 25, 30, 35 percent? And it has to do with a systematic realignment of the way endowment funds were managed and invested. The old model was a more traditional conservative model. Not very interesting, didn't create a lot of uh, extra money, but it was there. And it didn't go down. It was treasuries, fixed income. Uh, The new model, uh, which is now in general practice, is it, it takes on a riskier portfolio of illiquid assets, hedge funds, private equity. Uh, it's sometimes called the Yale model after David Swenson, who manages the Yale University account. Uh, this model was designed to keep up with inflation. I mean, it's not an evil model. But my issue is that I think it is problematic when applied to arts organizations because endowment revenue with this model goes down precisely when the organizations need that money most. Is it the same for colleges and universities? We know many of their endowments took such big hits. It it, it is all related to the same model, Yeah, Harvard. Mm -hmm. And so why would it be wrong for an educational institution or an arts organization if it's not wrong for individuals who are trying to keep up with the market or companies who are trying to keep up with, with inflation? It's not wrong in the abstract at all. I think it's wrong uh, because the risks involved with the model I don't think were fully understood by many of the organizations that were taking it on. There's a human factor there. Uh, Your endowment goes up, you spend more money. That's just human nature. And you don't necessarily say, wait a minute, we have a risky strategy here. We've got to put some money aside because this could go down significantly. Just right. at a time when fundraising goes down. Is it the same thing even for mom and pop investors? So many typical Americans whose money was in mutual funds in their 401ks or whatever maybe didn't realize how much risk they were in for, but this just became what was considered the standard That's exactly right. in terms of your savings. Right. Um, you know, I think there was a disconnect between what the managers of this money were doing and what the people on the arts side understood was happening. I think if they really knew what was going on, they would have anticipated the risks. How do private benefactors for arts institutions fit into the equation? Because ma- many of the, the larger institutions you know, probably can't survive without wealthy patrons um, who are not technically part of their endowment money, but they, you know, they've got their own investments. Did that dry up similarly? Well, that's right. I mean, that dries up. Foundation money dries up. Government money dries up. Um, the uh, one issue when you're raising money for an, an arts organization, first, let's say you have this risky investment strategy. Your endowment goes down. It's hard as a development officer 
to then go back to your donor and say, you know, we just it's a, we lost the money in a in a risky investment. Sorry, you know, can you give it again? Uh, second, when you're fundraising for the arts, it, it gets exceedingly difficult in economic downtimes to raise money from private individuals. Private individuals tend to steer their money towards what they see as more uh, kind of emergency causes. So you would advocate as an art critic, arts writer, um, for arts organizations to make less risky investments because it protects the basic mission even though it may not allow as much growth in that mission? I think that's right. Um, anticipate the risks of the investments you're making. And also look at spending. I think there was a general sense of overspending in the arts culture uh, where you know you have a problem, I think, when nonprofit institutions, directors of these institutions can command salaries of a million dollars a year, when museums are expected to expand exponentially every 10 years with you know, trophy facilities and new wings. Um, everything needs to be reined in. It's not just one problem, but all spending needs to be reined in as well.